fellow atheists. A while back I did that poll where the prompt was, I consider myself, and the options were atheist and or agnostic, no opinion, pantheist, polytheist, other, and a believer in God. Now, funny enough, I, I did that poll because somebody said, I wonder what your audience composition is. And the hilarious thing is I said, well, considering that atheists are only like 4 or 5% of the population, I, I said something to the effect of, I actually kind of hope most of my viewers aren't atheists, because what that mean if they are, then uh, my audience is really niche, which is fine, but I mean, if you want to have the largest appeal, appeal to a bigger crowd. Yeah, 89% of people in the survey said they were atheist and or agnostic. Now, I'm perfectly happy with that. I'm totally fine with that. I'm not going to start creating content to reach across to religious people. I mean, I'm not an anti-theist. I have discussed this at length in multiple videos I've made. I think that, I, I hope that one day we do live in a world without religion, but if I had a magic wand, I wouldn't get rid of religion right now, because people have to believe in something, and their beliefs would be instantaneously replaced with who knows what, and that could be catastrophic. I'd been doing a lot of thinking, and I wanted to discuss what I feel like is going on with atheism and the atheist movement. Now, atheism isn't a thing, so is there even such a thing as the atheist movement? I mean, not exactly, but I've always felt like atheism is sort of, it's kind of this online community, but I see it changing. And basically what's happened is it appears to have become a political movement, which is really annoying and unfortunate. Every single time that I create a video that outs me as not a leftist, like a, like a, like a far leftist, People aren't happy about that. You know, my recent video um, about Dean, early on when I was looking at that, uh, it appeared that I was actually losing subscribers and I, I thought that that was going to happen. My analytics were telling me I was in the negative. Where it sits right now, it's been about 24 hours since I made that, uh, since I put up that video. And I'm at, I'm at plus four, uh, which tells me I lost a bunch of people and then some new people saw it and decided to subscribe. And it's not like I'm not liberal. I mean, I I call myself a lefty every now and then. I probably agree with almost everything somebody who's a leftist says, apart from like the particular style and rhetoric they go about it, and I'm not a communist. I have always said exactly what I think, and the my YouTube channel, I have always always only ever made videos that I want to make, and I'm never going to stop doing that. The idea of putting out content to pretend to be somebody to appeal to a certain audience, the idea of being a person like that, uh, I'd, I'd rather kill myself. So if you don't like what I have to say, then fine, unsubscribe. Spanky will forgive you. If you're like me, at one point, you probably binged Christopher Hitchens, Dan Barker, Sam Harris, Richard Dawkins, maybe Daniel Dennett. Uh, there's also Ion Hersey Ali, several others. There, I don't, I don't remember the name of that YouTube channel, but there's this YouTube channel that does these massive compilations of so and so's best arguments or most epic debate moments. But I think a lot of us first got into this not by not by watching T.J. Kirk, the amazing atheist, not by listening to some of uh, what's his name Kyle Kalinsky's oldest videos, where he's always been a political guy, but you know he he did the atheism stuff too. Not Forrest Valkai, uh, not not the atheist experience. It it goes way back to all these all these old clips of those guys. So Sam Harris himself, for example. He said that he began writing The End of Faith the day after 9-11, or the concept of it. Um, he started writing it in his mind the day after 9-11. And those guys, Sam Harris, Daniel Dennett, Richard Dawkins, and Christopher Hitchens, Ayan Hirsi Ali was actually supposed to be in there, and they got she had to cancel, so Daniel Dennett came in at the last second. But they became 
New Atheism, which started with Sam Harris's book, The End of Faith, and then a couple years later, The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins came out. That became this phenomenon, and it was it was very heterodox at the time. I mean, post post 9-11, the Bush years, all these really famous people coming out and saying Christianity, religion, whatever is bad. That was that was pretty based back then. But what was new atheism? Well, it was never really a thing. The people the people at the center of it, they had they had many common beliefs, but it was kind of just it's been described as a publishing phenomenon. They they just all published these books kind of roughly all at the same time. And as similar as they were, there were actually big differences. Hitchens and Harris, uh, they're like pretty staunch anti-theists, whereas Dawkins is less so. Now, if, if you pay attention to what he says, uh, he he I've heard him say, for example, the morality of the Bible is hideous. He, he thinks the Bible is an awful book, uh, much of it at least, but, you know, he recently con- said he considers himself a cultural Christian because he lives in a country that it, it literally is Christian because they're technically a monarchy. They do have a official religion. And new atheism is, it, it's been dead for a while. And I think it died because it was never really an organization. It was, it was like Occupy Wall Street. It was just something that people did. There wasn't actually a leader. There wasn't a core set of principles or anything like that. But because secularists, atheists like myself, tend to be left-leaning politically like myself, new atheism, it basically, I feel like what happened was it got put to the loyalty test. And this is where the backlash came from. Dawkins, you know, he's gotten into some trouble for saying some things fairly recently. This was a few years ago. This happened on Twitter or something like that. Some woman posted something about how she was in an elevator and like a man stared at her or or something. Maybe he said something to her. I don't remember, but she like wrote about being really uncomfortable. And Dawkins said, yeah, in Islamic countries, women are are executed for you know, extramarital, like having sex outside marriage or whatever, but you've got it so bad in that elevator, don't you, basically, which there's nothing incorrect about what he said. I mean, I guess I can understand how it comes across as totally tone deaf and like, I don't know, diminishing her experience, which she wasn't assaulted or anything like that. But it's shit like that, where people just like want to, they're like, well, we're done with Richard Dawkins. And the stuff he said about, well, he said recently that he believes Christianity is fundamentally a decent religion, unlike Islam, which probably isn't all that fair. But also, like I said earlier, that's not exactly, that doesn't exactly capture what he thinks because he thinks the Bible is absolutely horrendous. Um, No better than than the Quran or anything like that. But these are obviously very different worlds. The United States is um, the one of the most deeply religious of the, you know, first world developed countries, OECD or whatever they're called. And yet compared to a place like Afghanistan or Iran, those are absolute hell holes that nobody should want to live in. Sam Harris is pretty often accused of being an Islamophobe, and for somebody who I've never heard be able to articulate why Donald Trump is such a disgusting human being, for him to be lumped in with Donald Trump with respect to Islamophobia is just, it's really incredibly ironic. Although I have a huge problem with something Sam Harris said recently. I watched an interview he did with Barry Weiss is kind of sort of a debate between him and Ben Shapiro. And Sam Harris said, at this point, I'm to the right of John Bolton with regard to foreign policy. Uh, So he advocates for like regime change in Iran. And I was like, what in the actual fuck? Now, I say all this because I find it really bizarre and ironic that leftists will say things like America is an oppressive patriarchy. Uh, They... (laughs) 
I hate this stupid fucking country. You know, I, I hate America. Um, will blanket an entire group of people like white women and Mexicans as racist and sexist because they didn't vote for Kamala Harris in the same numbers that uh, black women voted for Kamala Harris, for example. Um, leftists rightfully say that conservative Christianity is dangerous, but then they clutch their pearls when Sam Harris told Ben Affleck that Islam is the mother load of bad ideas. I mean, holy shit, if America is as bad as we think it is, then Saudi Arabia is so much worse that it, it should just be publicly condemned. And I, for whatever reason, that just makes you a xenophobe. Yeah, it's correct that not all Muslims support that type of thing. It's also the case that not every American, even not every American who voted Republican, is as bad as somebody like Jerry Falwell Jr. or uh, what's his name? Uh, Mike Huckabee. If Islam isn't the reason women and gays live in oppression and misery in these, you know, majority Islamic countries, well, then Christianity also isn't the reason women are having their rights taken away in America. But almost nobody pretends that that isn't the case. We paint with broad strokes here, and there's nothing wrong with that because people that know how to think know that we're not saying it's all people are the same if they're on that side. But for whatever reason, you can't be careful enough when, when attacking these ideas in other parts of the world. It's just weird. And I'm not saying it's as simple as Islam is fundamentally bad, but that's how I feel about Christianity. But obviously neither idea, neither religion is blameless. So because new atheism was never a real thing, I feel like its values were dictated to it, and people felt like it didn't hold up to those values, which I think that's 100% false. But people kind of said, I'm not part of new atheism anymore. I mean, I feel, I feel I feel like if Richard Dawkins went on Twitter right now and said, "Well, men can't be pregnant. Let's stop being silly." I I, I feel like I feel like everybody under the age of 25 would start saying atheism is transphobic. Remember, Mexicans overnight became racist because they voted 55% for Kamala Harris instead of 65% like they did with Biden. I see this politicization of atheism happening in places like, kind of like The Line, um, which I, I don't watch The Line. I see clips every now and then. But I, I went there after the election to see what was like being talked about or said, and it's just, it's become a complete joke. The only litmus test for atheism that I was aware of was, do you believe in God? But if you can't be a member of the line unless you pledge uh, leftist ideas, well, then congratulations. You just became a secular religion with your own commandments. Saying you can't laugh at Dave Chappelle or Tony Hinchcliffe jokes, that's just another example of blasphemy and graven images. And I know exactly what somebody would respond to this. Uh, they'd be like, well, you, if that's a religion, then so is Peterson. Like if you're a classical liberal, which I don't consider myself one, but whatever. Well, you just think that like government's a religion too. Uh, no, government is not a secular religion. Uh, governments, you know, they have laws. Um, but that's not the same thing as like commandments and purity tests because like the United States guarantees that you are an American with the same rights as everybody else, like no matter what you believe. The reason I'm critical of leftism, and again, let me repeat this. People who are left, who consider themselves lefties would probably consider me one too. I just don't call myself that because there are just certain elements like what I'm talking about in this video that I don't agree with even though down the line on the issues, what I think politically we should like, like laws that I would like to see changed, for example, or like new laws being enacted or, or rights being enshrined like constitution or whatever. I probably agree with almost all of them. So anyways, the reason I'm critical of what I see leftism being is because 
for one, sometimes it's funny. And if you can't, if you can't take a joke, then that's on you. Um, sometimes it's irrational, which is what I criticize, like man v. bear, for example. What does that look like? It looks like me, a person who thinks Harrison Butker is a, is a disgrace of a person and should shut the fuck up and he's an idiot. I think that and I think that misandrists who see a man in the forest as a rapist are also illogical idiots who should shut the fuck up. But probably the main thing, which is something I almost never talk about, is because leftists are espousing ideas that are catastrophically dangerous and actually in no way liberal. It, you, you can't say, I'm on the far left, and then have ideas that are completely counter to what, the, to what liberalism is. So, for example, the two biggest ones are, like, hate speech and disinformation. So, I think that hate speech is a useful framework for discussing certain things that are said. Um, and I used to think, I used to repeat the mantra, hate speech isn't free speech, and that sort of thing. But then I saw how it was weaponized, and I realized I had a massive blind spot. So, for example... If you say Donald Trump's deportation plan is like Nazi Germany, that is not hate speech. If you go to a college campus and say that, you can't be fined, you can't be arrested, the government can't take action against you. However, it is now considered hate speech to say what Israel is doing in Gaza is like Nazi Germany. This is the... The, it was something Anti-Semitism Awareness Act. It was passed earlier this year. Can you imagine right-wingers making what us liberals say illegal? Do you want to live in that world? If you legislatively open up definitions to try and criminalize what you don't want to hear, then guess what? People will do that to you. And I get it. This The overwhelming persuasiveness of this goes something like this. We're only trying to ban Nazis. How hard can that be? You can't possibly screw that up. Well, guess what? The other side will call you a Nazi for supporting Palestinians. That's how it gets screwed up. There was another thing, that, this was a couple years ago, but Biden tried to form a, it was an advisory board to the Department of Homeland Security and it was called the Disinformation Governance Board. And a lot of people cheerleaded this. Oh, finally, now Trump and Rogan and Alex Jones and Elon Musk and all those liars will now be censored. Yeah, except now Donald Trump is going to be president. Can you imagine a worse person uh, to grant the Department of Homeland Security authorization to go after disinformation. That's horrendous. That's exactly the opposite of what you want. Now, luckily, that board was never actually created. So, you know, Donald Trump would have to start all over with this idea. But if you're against him doing it, then you need to be against using it against them, too. That's just simply how it works. I'm sorry. The way I always viewed atheism was it was rejecting religion and religious-like beliefs of things like purity and sanctity, labeling others who think differently as not just incorrect about things, but like morally wrong, uh, a rejection of tribalism, all those sorts of things. Now, in place of that, I try to embrace more rational ways of thinking. I read books about cognitive biases by people like, Incredibly boring books by people like Daniel Kahneman. Um, I pay attention not just to what people are saying, but how you get from believing in thing A to spewing out thing B. And in my debate videos, you maybe you notice I I try to do that as often as I can. The whole internet atheism thing, being a sect of leftism. I feel like that betrays everything about what being an atheist has always been like for me. I think atheism belongs with liberal philosophy. Like, like of course, 
of of course, if you're an atheist, you you're probably going to adhere to left leaning ideas, not not just politically, but like liberal philosophy, like I said. But I, this shit is like becoming stupid. Leftists view a man in the for I already talked about this, but leftists view a man in the forest in exactly the same way that Trump described Mexicans coming across our border, rapists and murderers. If you if you can't see how just labeling a person that way is sexist in exactly the same way that saying 13% of the population commits 50% of the murders, therefore blacks are inherently more violent and racist, and if I see one, I'm just going to assume that, well, then you've lost your critical thinking skills in the idea of some weird identity politics that has become your new religion. And again, this comes from somebody who... I actually don't know what any of my right wing beliefs are. The only thing that people sometimes say is right wing about me is that I'm not a socialist, which that's you don't have to be you don't have to be right wing to that's not a right wing idea. I also think that the United States is a fundamentally good place um to live. D- does that does that make me a Republican? So instead of complaining, Do I have any recommendations? What would I like to see be done differently? Well, I'm not really in the business of telling people what to do. Um, I, I, I don't care if people are lefty atheists. In fact, leftists, they say things that are incredibly based and unintentionally hilarious at times. I, I don't, I don't have a problem necessarily with it. I just want people to think rationally. And I think the way you fix that, uh, my recommendation would be to stop making being an atheist a political movement and stop with the fucking purity testing. I mean, Jesus Christ, I'm getting accused of of turning into Pine Creek. A guy who thinks Kamala Harris is a communist. That guy's a fucking moron. You want to hear something that will blow your mind? There are gay liberal Democrats who fly pride flags, who support trans people, and who don't agree down the line with every single popular leftist take on, for example, trans issues. And these people, they're just no different than Jordan Peterson, aren't they? If you and I would hope you do, want to win over people's minds, if you want to win the culture war, and if we want to start being political winners instead of political losers, then you need to stop making your club as hard as possible to join. You don't accomplish any of those goals by being small in number. How could you possibly think that 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 that, that, that it would be anything other than that case? And what I what I don't mean by that is uh, the other annoying thing is like oh you're just a centrist no I'm actually not I don't mean like <laughs> I don't mean start being friends with people like Liz Cheney uh, I I mean like I just mean settle the fuck down and stop doing shit like well this person isn't inclusive enough and their name ends with K so now whenever I spell their name online I'm gonna put three K's at the end of it. Let's say the reason Kamala Harris lost the election is because America is too racist and sexist, which is idiotic, but we can pretend that that's true. Then we shouldn't have nominated her, shouldn't we? There should have been a primary so that we could have gotten boring ass straight white male Gavin Newsom in there uh, because he would have won the election. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty confident in that. Now, would that just simply reinforce the idea that we actually are sexist and racist okay go with that um it would also mean that whoever retires from the supreme court in the next four years will be appointed by somebody other than donald trump isn't that exactly what we all want you know instead of dying for what you believe in politically speaking um settle for what's not perfect but not a disaster which would include doing things like not telling half the country that it's their fault Donald Trump is president and that they're bad people. Because why would they join your side and and do politically what our goal is next time? You're making the club harder to get into. 
am I being super pessimistic? Does atheism have a bright future? I because I think the truth is irresistible. Uh, yeah, I'm actually not all that pessimistic of a person. So, what I the last thing I just wanted to say was, who do I think? What direction do I think? Well, not really. What direction do I think atheism is going to go in? But who do I view as the new leaders of atheism? Because Hitchens and Dennett are dead. Richard Dawkins will be dead in just a few years, and he's really not putting out a lot of content or anything like that. Sam Harris will be around for a really long time, but I think the torch is getting passed. Um, I don't. I don't really have too much to say about this because this video is already going to be about half an hour long or so. But I. I think the new faces of this atheism thing online and and also like in in public, I, I think Alex O'Connor is by far the figurehead for this because he's just so incredibly articulate and he's not getting bogged down with the politics. He has strong opinions on things like free speech and you know he he defends it, but he he's I just more so think what he's doing is is really excellent. And that includes the things like talking to people like Jordan Peterson and and others who we don't like, but you have to do that. I should have. There's this other big criticism about, you know, when you platform people, that's, that's bad and they should be kicked off social media. Um, no, you have to, those people have to be in the same uh, ecosystem that we're in because that's the only way we can combat them because otherwise what they do is they go to their own places like i don't know like i don't know, rumble or or truth social or whatever and there they don't get any pushback and they become an echo chamber which is worse because you can't ban them you can also you can only you can only divert them i think rationality rules i think what he does is really great now he's like um he 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 makes his politics in there a little bit but i i like the way that he does it you know he just really recently had on that philosopher bofides no not bofides what's hold on i'll go look thomas bogardis and i probably said that wrong too but if you guys don't know that was the philosopher who had that debate with vouch years ago where he's basically arguing against the thing like trans women are women. Here are the philosophical reasons why that argument doesn't work very well. And Vouch said the, the thing about water is aqua in, in Mexico. <laughs> Genetically modified skeptic. I don't know what that guy's real name is, but um, I think he does an excellent job. And again, these are people with very liberal to leftist ideas. But I feel that they're not, they're not doing the pearl clutching and the purity testing so much as other people are. Matt Dillahunty, uh, Matt, Matt is expiring. He has simply become miserable, and I don't know why this is, and I'm not talking about, like, I felt this way months ago. For whatever reason, he just crashes out on people when he debates them. He's been doing it for so long, and maybe that's just inevitable, which is too bad. I... I have watched Matt Dillahunty's debate with uh, Jordan Peterson multiple times because I think it was a masterclass in owning somebody. But I don't know. I don't know what happened lately with him. So I do not view him as the future. Aaron Ra. I don't. I don't know what's going on there either. I haven't really paid very close attention to him for a while. What What I'm hearing people say with regard to Aaron is that. He's like writing his own book of revelations now that Trump is president. He's just gone full, he's gone full like bug out, the end is nigh sort of thing with regard to Trump. So I don't really view Aaron as as being the face, or I, I wouldn't hope necessarily that he's the face of the future. Forrest Valkai, he's a, he's a great science communicator. And I think Forrest would rather uh, predominantly be a science communicator, although I like I don't know a hundred like I'm sure he'd like to see change in the world, but yeah, anyways. Now I I know that he's a self proclaimed far leftist. He's said that he said I'm way far to the left uh, than most people are. Now again I don't care about that, 
as long as it doesn't come with the scolding and, you know, here's the list of people I will be publicly denouncing because they said that capitalism isn't inherently evil or whatever. And he doesn't do that. I'm not saying that he does that. I'm not 100% sure about Forrest because, like I said, I, I think he wants his, you know, main thing to be about, like, promoting science, which is kind of my main thing, too. I, I think, like, science and critical thinking are more my thing. I actually don't care all that much to talk about atheism and to debate religion. It happens so often because the people against what I'm talking about, um, <laughs> their justifications lie within religion and, and religious type thinking. So those are my thoughts. You can hate them. You can love them. You can think, eh, it wasn't particularly inspiring, but whatever. Ultimately, I, I want our side to win and, uh, we're not winning, and I think these are the reasons why. Instead of trying to be better at what we do, we just simply say that the other side, uh, the reason they don't think the way we think is because they're bad. We're going to be losers forever if we keep doing that. We don't have to be more like them to bring people on our side. We just got to get our shit together, is all. The truth is irresistible, and I think we have it. So, let's just do a better job. See you tomorrow.